Welcome back to what I think is a fairly straightforward but critically important topic, and that is JSON, or JavaScript Object Notation. It's a lightweight data interchange format, and it's important not just for developers, but also for penetration testers and bug bounty hunters as well, because JSON crops up practically everywhere. In this video, we'll go over JSON types, how it's used, some practical examples, and by the end of the video, you'll have enough working knowledge to be comfortable reading, writing, and modifying JSON going forwards. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. So first up, what is JSON and where is it used? Well, JSON has become the de facto standard for sending and receiving data for web APIs. And that alone is probably reason enough to learn it due to the increasing popularity of APIs over the last decade or so. So every time we're using an app or accessing a website, it's probably JSON working its magic behind the scenes. It's not limited to web development either. Configuration files, data storage, and many other applications utilize the JSON format. But why is it so popular? Well, it's really lightweight, so sending it back and forth doesn't cost us anything extra in terms of overhead. And compared to something like XML, it's much easier to read and handle. JSON is also a superset of JavaScript, meaning that anything you write in JSON is valid JavaScript. And regardless of how you feel about JS, it's so widely implemented these days, it's not something that we can ignore as penetration testers. And finally, because of this, it's also widely supported. Every language and framework that I know has a library to pass JSON. Let's take a look at the JSON types. When we talk about data types, we first need to remember that JSON is a data representation format. So of course it supports various data types and primarily has two structures to support this, objects and arrays. Natively, JSON supports strings, numbers, which can be whole numbers, negative numbers, decimals, and scientific notation, booleans, and null. And of course, the two structures that we just mentioned, objects and arrays. Objects can be a little bit more complex, and we'll look at some practical examples in a minute, but it's worth noting here that this is probably the most important and widely used part of JSON. Let's take a look at some practical examples. So here we're going to create a JSON file that represents a user in our application. So for objects in JSON, we use key value pairs and the value can be any of the data types that we discussed in the previous section. It's worth noting here that we could just use a single data type or array to our JSON file, but more often than not, you'll see everything as an object. So to create an object, we need some curly braces. So we can open and close them like this. And I'm just going to save this as user.json. Inside, we can start to add our key value pairs. And if we want multiple pairs, we can separate them by a comma. So for example, we have name, and we're just going to go with Jeremy. And then we can have something like age, and we can go with 35. So notice here that I didn't add any quotes around the 35 because I want it to be a number rather than a string. So for example, if I did this, 35 would be interpreted as a string. Now, if we want to continue to add more data types, we can add a Boolean. For example, we can add something like is admin false. And once again, the true false statements don't need quotes around them. And we can also embed an array in here. So for example, we could have roles and I'm just going to use the discord roles as an example. And we need a little comma there like this. And let's say we have three roles and the first one is going to be the PH course. The second one is going to be the practical API hacking course. And the final one can be a Nitro booster role, for example. And finally, we can also do things like embedding objects inside of objects. So if Jeremy has a bunch of favorite sites and we don't just want to store the site name, but also let's say the type, we can do that by embedding an array of objects. So let's do favorite sites like this. And then we're going to open an array like this. And then for each item, we're going to create a new object 
And this is going to be something like name. And let's just say it's try hack me. And the type is CTF. And here we can then add another object. So his next favorite site is integrity. And the type here is bug bounty, for example. So this is much more powerful than a flat data structure. And one thing to remember that maybe I didn't mention before is the last key value pair within an object, we leave out the comma. So the comma denotes that there should be another key value pair following. But of course, as you can see, I've left out the comma here and here and also at the end of the last object here. So if we wanted another object, of course, we would do the same, add another comma, and then add another object. So next up, let's see our JSON working in action with one of our vulnerable API endpoints. So here, what I've done is just spun up one of the labs from our bug bounty course, and we won't be going through the lab and solving it today, but we'll just be using the API endpoint as a demonstration so that we can see JSON in action. We'll start out using curl, and then we'll also proxy the traffic into burp suite so that we can take a closer look. So I'm just going to curl dash x and we're going to post because we're going to try and log into this endpoint and get a token. And we want to add the header content type application slash JSON. And then we want to add our JSON data. So here, first up, let's add our curly braces. And then we want to add our username like this. And the username is going to be Jeremy. And then we also want to add a password like this. So our password is going to be cheesecake, which I think is the correct password, if I recall correctly. And then we're going to post this to http colon slash slash localhost. And then slash labs, if I can spell localhost right. And then slash labs api login.php. And looks like I missed a space between HTTP and our data. So let's try that again. And here we get some JSON back. So if we proxy this quickly, so if we do dash dash proxy localhost 8081. So we'll come to Web Suites and click on our request. And we can come in and we can see that here we have JSON. And of course, here is returned JSON as well. So let's send this to repeater quickly. And if we send this again, we could try and modify this. So for example, if this was a registration endpoint and we had a mass assignment vulnerability, we could do something like privileges admin like this, for example. And when you're working in Web Suite, by the way, it's sometimes a little bit easier to switch over to raw to make sure that the formatting kind of stays the same. Some people prefer pretty, but you know, each to their own. And so here, once again, we can send this and we see that we still get a success and we get the token back, but this is still valid JSON and we can go ahead and start testing our API. And so that's it for our learning JSON video. And really that's all you need to know to be ready to handle JSON payloads in your day-to-day -day work. If you enjoyed these short and practical learning videos, then let us know down in the comments below and feel free to share any topics that you want us to cover in the future. Catch you next time.